This is the big idea where we bring on a big time guest to manage an epic matchup on Out of the Park Baseball 22, Play What the Pros Play, the ultimate baseball strategy game, and we're thinking big today. The incomparable J.P. Morosi, baseball insider, <laughs> Ivy Leaguer, all around superstar of knowledge. Not much gets past this man. J.P., my dude, it is so good to meet again in this environment. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean, Scotty. It's always a pleasure to work with you, no matter what we're doing. If it's a YouTube game, if it's if it's a game like this, simulating historically, I love this. It's bringing back a lot of great memories for me, and I can't wait to get this game going. The dream bracket over quarantine was an epic tournament, and we did multiple tournaments where we took all-time teams and all-time players on all-time teams and matched them up and it was you and me, JP, every single day. You were my quarantine therapy, where we would be chatting <laughs> about incredible all-time baseball matchups every single day. It would run all over MLB.com and Twitch and social media accounts. And it feels like a million years ago, but it actually was, what, probably eight, nine, ten, whatever, a year ago, something like that, eight, nine, ten months ago. And you and me fell in love with creating these dream scenarios. We had a lot of fun, Scott, and uh, still apologies for the uh, frequent interruptions from my children who would uh, often come in and <laughs> announce their arrival and their own commentary to our dream bracket simulations. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot of baseball history during that time, and obviously uh, we were home and, and, and thinking about so many different things at that moment, but to be able to dive into some historical knowledge that I didn't know and really have a chance to grow and learn about some historic teams, learn a lot about the Big Red Machine, learn a lot about some great historic rosters of the Pirates. Uh, you go back to the 94 Expos, the Kansas City Monarchs, learn a lot about them. So there was a, some really cool things that we learned about that I had not had a, t a ton of familiarity with previous to that. So it was it was a pretty special experience and one that certainly, Scott, for me, spending time with you uh, gave me a lot of light during a tough time. And we've been friends for a long time already at this point, but probably about a decade at MLB Network together already, but it, it really brought a next level I bond agree. for us. We are, <laughs> we are tight as can be. And so now let's relive it one time and we get to pick the matchups, okay? So I'm going to hop in. You're going to manage one of your all-time epic matchups. So first off, let's tell the world what your plan is today. What is one of your dream matchups for the big idea? Well, Scott, thanks for the opportunity here. I can't wait. I'm so excited about this because now I get a chance to manage one of these teams. So here we go. I'm going to start with the 1987 Tigers. I'm going to manage them. Of course, I'm from the great state of Michigan. The Tigers were my favorite team growing up. Uh, 1987 was the year that I really fell in love with baseball, with the Tigers. Uh, my first ever game with my dad at Tiger Stadium, September 19th, 1987, Tigers Brewers. Alan Trammell had three hits, so I'm, I've got to go with my heart on this one. I'm managing the Tigers on the road at Wrigley Field, the 03 Chicago Cubs. The reason I'm choosing the 03 Cubs is – that was sort of the omega to the alpha of falling in love with baseball. In 03, I was a, between my junior and senior years of college, I was an intern at the Grand Rapids Press. And my boss there, Mary Ulmer, sent me to cover two epic series the Cubs played that year that helped catapult them to the NLCS. Uh, and I remember I was sitting in the home dugout at Wrigley Field saying, I'm going to cover baseball for a living. This is what I want to do. This is my dream. And so being at Wrigley that summer set me on the course to be sitting here with you today, Scott. So uh, I felt like the 87 Tigers, 03 Cubs are very special in my journey in baseball. And I wanted to honor both of them, two great teams that lost in the LCS. So this is now their chance to play for something truly special here with us today. Redemption here. The dream comes back alive. You know everything about everything. So to pinpoint two teams that are so dear to you that you know even more about that you followed on a daily basis, I know you're gonna be bringing it, JP. So let's set up some settings and then we'll get into the lineups as well. So this is a one gamer. This decides, however you wanna call it, which of JP's two most cherished teams or two of his top most cherished teams 
are best and do you want dhs on both sides or one side as we have the cubs as the home team what's the plan sure uh we'll call it the morosi cup i suppose maybe something like that again my affinity <laughs> for hockey as well so we'll go universal dh for both teams i realize we're in the nl park you have to go with the iconic corner of addison and clark in chicago to play this game so yes we're on the road dh for both teams uh i i love the format of this game this is going to be so much fun i i can't wait we'll, we'll we'll go with true simulations where where injuries i suppose unfortunately are possible uh, a lot of other yes. factors that i have to manage here as sparky anderson i i'm i'm imagining myself scott wearing jersey number 11 sparky anderson the hall of famer so uh this of course three years after sparky managed the tigers to the world series championship and so uh, i want to try to be him i want to be sparky here today and what's your era and strategy are we playing the the 2003 style of baseball or the late 80s i gotta go late 80s scott that's what i fell in love with nice. and if i'm gonna be sparky I'm not sure how Sparky would feel about 03 style of baseball. So I've got to go with, with Sparky's <laughs> wheelhouse, 1980s. One more big question. This is big, okay? I'm doing end of season rosters, I'm assuming, because otherwise the Cubs wouldn't have Kenny Lofton and Aramis Ramirez. The Tigers wouldn't have Doyle Alexander, which is a whole nother conversation within itself, which we'll get into. So are you cool with end of season rosters? Have to. That, that is a great question. Have to go end of season rosters. The Lofton Ramirez trade was so crucial. Doyle Alexander, some call ups. Jim Whalewander, Scott Lou Sater were so key for the Tigers that year. And also Bill Madlock, the former Cub, DH. That's right. Yeah, and that's big that we have the DH for both sides. So let's get into that. Let's let's set up the matchup now. And this is big. I, I know you probably stayed up all night pondering lineup yes. so the plan is yes you are going to be sparky and you are going to manage the tigers but i want you to set the optimal lineup for both sides so let's start with the chicago cubs and i want i would like you let's start on the pitching side and then you'll set the optimal lineup because we do want to put them in the best position to succeed sure and so who would be starting for the chicago cubs when you have quite the trio to choose from we have a lot of great options. I'm going to go with prior to start. So I'll go with prior to start. Now, their starting lineup, I think Lofton's got to lead off. I love Tom Goodwin, but he's going to bat lower in the lineup. So we got we have to go Lofton leading off. There you go. Grudzelanek bats second. I'm going to put Aramis third ahead of Sosa. And then, goodness, I feel like... I, I think so. Good one. You, the lefty bat. My other... Well, wait a minute. Where's where's Alou? Alou's got to play. Well, that's right? why so we have Alou, you here. We need you to help us set this lineup. Moises Alou's on the Alou bench. Alou so has to coming? play. So, uh, Alou... We're going to put Alou in left field in place of Goodwin. Um, I'm going to move... And Alou's got to move up. So, I want to go... Yeah. We're going to go... Although, that's a lot of righties in a row. Tell you what, let's do this. Let's put Patterson, let's move Patterson down to the seven spot. Alex Gonzalez goes to the eight spot. And then to split my lefties, I want to put, so we got Hesop Choi there. I'm going Randall Simon. Simon was really good for them down the stretch that year. So let's go Simon there. Instead of he stopped Choi. So Randall Simon instead of he, he stopped Choi. Replacing and, and Choi. And I, I guess it yes. is, yes. And it is fair if you just give us this, just give us a preview. Or is it a lefty or a righty on the mound on the Tiger side? Because So it's going to be a righty. I, I'm going to go with the Hall of Famer, okay. Jack Morris. I know Doyle Alexander was, was nice. a, a huge part of that team. But when you have a chance to start a Hall of Famer, you start him. So I'm going to start with Morris. Um, so that's why I'm thinking Lofton. You know, the one, the one second guessing I'm having here is do I start Tony Womack instead of Grudzelanek at second base? But you know, Grudzelanek's a really good player. Um, Womack had some pretty good And Kairos on your bench spot. instead of, instead of Simon? Okay. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm going to go with Simon at, at first. I mean, he's, he's, he's really good on this team. So, yeah, that, that's, that's good. So I'll, I'll go Lofton, Grudzelanek, Ramirez, Sosa, 
Simon, Alou, Patterson, Alex Gonzalez. Then behind the plate, let's go Damian Miller. I know Paul Bacco was a big part of this club too, but I'm going to stay with Damian Miller. Of course, he was an 01 World Series champion with the with the Diamondbacks. Uh, I, I like this lineup, uh, but I'm but I'm good. I'm thinking I wouldn't be surprised if Dusty makes a move and and maybe hits Womack for Grudzelanek early in the game. There you go. There you go. Yeah, and and hey, Dusty and the computer is in control. The AI of that side so we'll see what they do as the game goes um so we are going to set the cubs to the computer side we are running the tigers and here is your team hall of famer sparky my team I get so to be sparky. first take okay. us your starter yeah jack morris gets the ball uh so i, I love and, and especially i love frank tanana of course a graduate of detroit catholic central star with the angels early in his career but I, I just think that with that lineup, all those righty bats, you got to start a righty. Jack's in the Hall of Fame. So I'll go Jack to start. I think Tanana maybe is a good middle reliever if I need him. And then you've got Doyle Alexander late. Uh, some good some good names there. One name I see on that list, by the way, Dickie Knowles was, I believe, Scott, traded for himself. He was traded, I think, from the Cubs to the Tigers for a player to be named later, and Dickie Knowles himself was the player to be named later. We have to confirm that, but I believe that's exactly what happened. So uh, we'll that talk to Dickie Knowles That is incredible. The course of the game. <laughs> yeah, and I, think I love they that. actually outlawed that as soon as that trade happened. So we'll, we'll get some more info on that later. Uh, so with the lineup. Shocker, you can't I, play I, the tra- I, can't trade a player for himself. Shocked right, that exactly. they made that, that move. That, that's that awesome. Was, that was like the Dickie Knowles rule. I mean, that, that came into play after this trade. It, it's incredible. All right, so... I like a lot of the options here. Of course, we've got two righties on the mound, so you, you want to go with your lefty lineup. Uh, although, oh, man, Jim Whalewander was such an interesting story that year. It looks like, oh, my friend Billy Bean is on the team. So I, I'm going to go with, I'm going to put Billy Bean in place of Pat Sheridan. Uh, he is my friend, so I'm going to put him in there. So Billy Bean is, is, is going to play. I've got to move Lou Whitaker up. So I, goodness. Let's put Lou batting second. So let's let's just switch Lou and Chet. Okay. Although that's making me a little vulnerable. I, I see the wisdom in how things were going there because now I've got three righties in a row. All right. Begrudgingly, I'm going to put Chet back in the second spot. Let's do this. Chet second. There, there you go. We'll go Chet second. Okay. And then I I want actually I want to switch Lou and Gibby. So I want to lead off with Lou and then put Gibby lower in the lineup. I know Gibby is one of the great clutch playoff performers ever, but I think he's going to have more RBI chances batting 7th than he would batting leadoff. There you go. And and he was a speedster that year too, 26 Yeah, exactly. Bags. He was he was one of their best base stealing threats. Mm-hmm. So he'll create a little action for you down there. Okay, so you feeling That's comfortable right. about this lineup? These are your guys. I like it, and 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 Billy Billy had a lot of speed. There's a lot, lot. I think he's going to help create on the bases. So I like having him down there. I, I love Johnny Grubb, Larry Herndon, both good options off the bench for me. But I like Billy batting ninth. Perfect. And this is going to be a night game. Of course, it's going to be packed. Let's just head over to these options for just a moment. You are going to be controlling the visiting. Detroit Tigers from 1987 against the 2003 Chicago Cubs. We have a DH. We're using the pitcher warm-up rule. So, later in the game, or whenever, let's say your pitcher is getting roughed up early on, you let me know who you want to warm up. Starter, reliever, doesn't matter. This is all hands on deck. It will take about two to three batters for that pitcher to warm up. So, just give me a little heads up. So, let's say it's the inning before, and you're thinking, hey, I want to go to Kerry Wood now. Scotty, let's start to warm up that pitcher. He won't get overwarm. They'll sit him back down if need be. And eventually you can put him in. The other thing to keep in mind is that when there is a mound visit, that will buy you a little more time, a few more tosses in the bullpen. So just something to think okay. about as you strategize as you're the Tigers. With I like this. Some of the names that we mentioned. And Scott, this affirms what we have come to realize ourselves calling major league games. These games move fast. These games move fast mm-hmm. for us. So we're going to have a lot of decisions to make. The major league game is fast. 
And I get to be Sparky today. This is so cool. There was you one time, sparky. Scott, I'll tell you a quick story. One time as a kid, my dad let me stay up to watch a night game, which was a big deal in our house. And and Sparky put in Willie Hernandez late. It was a game at Yankee Stadium. And I burst into tears. I said, he's going to give it up. And the Tigers are going to lose. I like ran to my bedroom, like burst into tears, bawling my eyes out. I was probably like six, seven, eight years old. And of course, Willie gave it up and the Tigers lost. And and we always joke about that. My dad always says, you know what? At that point in time, I thought, John really loves baseball. Maybe this is something he'll want to do when he, when he grows up. So it was a, a, a seminal moment, Scott, in my childhood. That is, yes, that, that is history in the Morosi family right there. <laughs> I love it, JP. <laughs> That's great. Well, this is it. This, this is one of the games of your dreams right now. You're staying up late. You're staying up late, 8 o'clock start for the Cubbies and the Tigers, two of your faves. You ready to play ball? Let's do it. Great Lakes baseball, my friend, on the shores of Lake Michigan. I love it. Nice. All right, JP. Here we go. We are in this game. Mark Pryor is on the mound. You are the Detroit Tigers. And Lou Whitaker is going to lead the way for your ball club. And, and of course, we have a Tigers team that, just to remind everyone, lost to the Twins in the ALCS in five games. On the other end, you have a Cubs team, and this is – this is maybe earmuffs for Cubs fans, although maybe it doesn't matter anymore. They won the World Series, but um, right. many years later. This was a, a painful year for the Chicago Cubs, eventually. This was the, should we say the name? Or should we hold it for later? Sure. The Bartman. Bartman year. It happened. <laughs> of course, the, the neighbor the neighbor of eventual Cub, Jason Kipnis. Yeah, that's right. So, hey, fast forward, Cubs fans. Life is good now, but let's relive the magic here and see if the Cubbies can pull off a big victory against your squad. So here we go, JP. You're going to mix in whatever you've got on these guys. I want to hear the strategy. I want to hear what we're doing here. Lou Whitaker is going to lead the way for your ball club. And, of course, I know you were a big fan. He was an all-star and a silver slugger at, at one point there. I think that was his fifth consecutive trip to the all-star game and his last one that season, all 19 seasons with the Detroit Tigers. I know you're a big fan. So – you know the plan on offense, especially with no one on. Swing away, take pitch, bunt for hit. Each AB, you'll let me know what you want to do. You ready to roll? I am ready. Lou should be in the Hall of Fame because he was so creative offensively. And right now, Scott, he is going to bunt for a hit. No way. We're starting off with a bunt for a hit. All right. Let's see how he does. Lays Come on, down Lou. the bunt. Misses. Huh. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is okay. Mark Pryor. Well, then, yeah, then this was away. elite uh, swing Lou and miss stuff. Me he wants to swing away. Let's swing away, Lou. Okay. So, two strikes against him. One, two count. Lou swinging away against Pryor. And the count is full, and Pryor straightens him up with a strikeout. Bad managing by me. Bad managing. All right. <laughs> I'm already over managing. Chet, swing away. Come on, Chet. Chet Levin coming up against Pryor, who was an absolute sensation this season. And Levin makes contact. It's weak, though. And it's caught at second base by Grudzelanik for out number two. Grudzelanik, a gold Noakes. glover, and Matt Noakes. 32 homers for the Tigers that year. His swing away, Matt. Let's hit one onto Waveland Avenue. He was the power-hitting catcher in the sport that year. Oh, and he got hit. Oh, here we go. Setting it up for the MVP. Should have been MVP. I still get in arguments, Scott, with my friends from Canada. With all due respect to George Bell, Alan Trammell was the rightful MVP that year. He's now in the Hall of Fame. He's going to swing away right here. That was his best season, JP. Career high and average on base, slug, no PS plus, home runs, RBIs, hits, and runs. And this is a Hall of Famer in his prime, swinging away. Ground ball, left side. They'll go the easy way to second, and that retires the side. Now, it's early, but do you have a feeling that this could be a duel, not just with two pitchers, but with many pitchers, because you have Kerry Wood in the bullpen for Dusty. He's got Kyle Farnsworth, who throws a million back then, and then you have quite the bullpen as well, with your starters included. Oh, I do. I think I'll go, if I need help mid-game, I go with Tanana to switch it up right-left. And then I come back with Alexander and Mike Henneman 
the great closer of this team. Nice. Okay, here's Jack Morris, big game pitcher. This was a big decision, too. Before we get going with this, Doyle Alexander was traded for John Smoltz. They were thinking about Steve Searcy, but they went with Smoltz because he was further away. And Doyle Alexander was a stud this year. Actually, I was looking. I know they didn't look at these numbers back then, but at his ERA plus, 100 is league average. For anyone that doesn't know the stat too well, it's a very easy stat. It compares to the rest of the league and, and is factoring in ballpark and, and the league and the settings at the time. 279 ERA plus is unheard of. That's almost, he was worth almost three average pitchers in one. That's how good Doyle was. But you go with Morris because of what? The, the moxie, the experience, the clutchness? Big game pitcher, Hall of Fame resume. This is, he is someone who obviously game seven, 1991, you want Jack Morris on the mound in a big spot. And so I'm going with Jack here. Uh, that that fork ball he threw was so good. I think it's going to really help neutralize the righty bats of the Cubs. And and I, I trust Jack Morris in a big spot. And, and you're right. The, the the backstory about the the Alexander Smoltz trade is that actually the Braves wanted Steve Searcy first. That's a great mentioned by you they wanted steve searcy and there was a little bit of a disagreement with the front office there in detroit and they said nah give him smoltz and we in michigan still rue that day uh, that they gave up smoltz <laughs> instead of searcy oh uh, smoltz we miss you smoltz it all worked out for him and right now jack morris is on the mound let's get going with the bottom of the first kenny lofton's up with the speed he can make contact what's the move here we're, we're going to pitch to him here. We're not going to worry about pitching the contact. Just just get a good at-bat to go for Jack. Here is Jack against Lofton. It's sent to center field. And a lazy fly ball. It is caught by Lemon in center. One away. Chet was such a great and graceful center fielder. So they pitched the contact here as well. Grids a like a good, good contact hitter, but I think you can pitch the contact here as well. You want to pitch to contact or pitch to the batter? Like you're going for, well, you want we'll him to make contact batter. or you want swing and miss, right? Yeah, pitch we'll to batter. Yep. Yeah, Jack Morris, let's see if he can get a little swing and miss action going too. Decent K numbers that year. Spits it over to the right side. Morris covers the bag. You know he does. He's a gamer. Two down. Pitch to batter here. Aram is always dangerous with men on base, and I'm glad to see him batting with the bases empty. This was the big pickup from the Pirates in 2003. The big trade deadline acquisition, Ramirez and Lofton, two key members of that squad. So you're going to pitch to the batter. Nobody on. And he sends it to the left side. Three up, three down. So far, so good on the pitching end. And let's get back to your bats, JP, with Daryl Evans leading the way. Oldest home run champion in American League history. Daryl Evans, swing away, my friend. Let's see what you got, Daryl. 34 home runs, 99 RBIs that year. He had 257. And Pryor gets weak contact to short. That's Gonzalez to make the play. One down. And here's Bill Madlock. I love having Bill Madlock here. He was released by the Dodgers earlier that year. And it was a great pickup for the Tigers, tremendous DH, and he won multiple batting titles with the Cubs back in the 1970s. Yeah, he was cut in May of 1987 and picked up 15th and final season is right here. So is Bill swinging away? 100%. Great, great, pure hitter. Prior deals. That one's got some air. Pretty deep in right field, and it is caught. By Sammy Sosa. Two down here in the second, and it's Kirk Gibson in the seven spot. That's a nice bat to have as your seven hole hitter. I love it, Scott. My lineup depth here, and Gibby in a big spot. I, I want to see a drive to right field, just like we saw in 84 and 88. Okay, Gibby. Pryor's been great so far, and that's a fastball down the middle. For strike three, Mark Pryor bringing the heat down Broadway. And Kirk Gibson heads back to the dugout. And so did the Tigers. We played one and a half. No score. Jack Morris against Sammy Sosa. Ooh, this is juicy. Great matchup. Come on, Jack. Fork ball down. Throw that ball down. Don't let Sosa elevate it. Here we go. Sosa sends it to right. 
It is deep. Warning trap. And gone. Oh, no. Sammy Sosa goes opposite field. 387 feet of glory to give the Cubs a 1-0 lead. Scott, you know, Jack Morris, he hated walking guys, and so I think for him, he would rather make Sosa put it in play by having it over the plate. It just got too much of the plate. Opposite field for Sosa. I can live with that. As Sparky, I can live with that. Sosa was shuffling, doing the little lateral shuffle over to first, even though it was it was not that far gone in right, right? It, under 400 feet, but but Sammy felt like just he barely. had it. Just barely. He breaks the ice. Cool night yeah, on the north just side. barely. Okay, it's Randall Simon up now, and you're going to pitch away here? Exactly. Pitch to him. Let's pitch to Randall. And that's weak. That's easy. Your guy, Alan Trammell, has it for out number one. Simon Moises was also Alou. a great nice. pickup by the Cubs that year. Moises Alou was always someone who, when I – Watched him play, Scott. I always felt like he was going to get a big hit. Great, great offensive player. Yeah, he was second best in the power department that year to Sammy Sosa on this team. 22 home runs, 91 RBIs. Going to pitch to the batter? 100%. All righty. Here we go, JP. Check swing. And that's ball four. He held up. Ooh, that's a surprise. And by the way, so, so here we go. Given the situation let's look at yes. the circumstances here i guess we have to go double play depth with the best double play combo ever trammell and whitaker so we'll go double play depth and and then we'll, we'll we'll certainly right now pitch to contact trying to trying to get that ground ball double play get us out of the inning awesome okay here we go Corey patterson let's see if morris can cue it up right side diving stop but didn't hold on to it and Lou Whitaker can only swallow that baseball. There's no play. Runners on first and second now for Chicago. I am flummoxed here. I think you have to just play the infield back, and and we're not going to worry about holding Moises on. Uh, let's just keep uh, – I would say we'll stay at double play depth there with the, with the infielders back, but we're not, we're not okay. going to worry. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Perfect. Double play depth. And you're and, not going to worry about worry holding about the runner. You're just going to pitch. Yeah, just going to pitch. Go for it. Okay. Alex Gonzalez, one of their weaker bats in the eight spot, swing and a miss. There you Change go. Change up from Jack. All right. Now we get to go back to normal depth with two outs. And let's, let's really attack Damian Miller here, pitch to him, and let's get out of this inning with just the one run. Perfect. Here we go. Big game Jack Morris. That's ripped into left field, and that's going to roll to the wall. Damian Miller connects. That scores one. Here comes another, and Alou's going to score. Patterson gets to third, and Patterson slides in. He's safe. Damian Miller ends up with a two-run double from the nine-hitter. The catcher comes through to make it 3-0. I am... Um... Very, very frustrated here. How can the nine batter <laughs> hurt us that badly here, Scott? This is this is frustrating. Of course, I should have known a veteran of the World Series like Miller would be dangerous in that spot. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's say this. We're going to pitch around Lofton and then go after the next righty. Let's do that. So not going to intentional walk him. You're just not going to give him much to just much pitch to carefully. Pitch carefully. Too. Don't let okay. Lofton beat you. Don't 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 get beat by a lefty here. He's 0 for one, and on the three one that misses. That's ball I'm okay four. With that. So I'm first okay with second. That. Okay. You feel better about right. Grudzlana? Let's let's really attack Grudzlana here. Pitch the batter. Okay. Here it comes, Grudzalonic into center, and that's going to drop. And here comes Miller, and here comes the Cubs' offense to make it 4-0. All right, we're going to have to start. I tell you what, let's start warming up Tanana. Let's get Tanana up in the pen. If the inning gets to Simon, then we got to bring him up. Then we have to bring Tanana in as a long guy. Here we go. I, I How have, disappointed have seen are you right now in, in, in Mr. Morris? I have seen enough. I am second-guessing myself for not starting Alexander, and I have seen enough from Jack. Jack, 
I love you, but we, we got to get Tanana up right now because I need somebody to bridge us long here. If Jack finds out about this, he's going to be angry. He's going to want to play one of these himself. <laughs> I think, <laughs> and then, uh, well, well, trust me, he'll have to go back to the Essexville Hampton Little League to play me in a game, and he's not going to like what he sees there either, I can assure you of that. Here we go. Jack, don't text All right, me. We, Sorry. Have, we have to pitch to Aramis. We're, we're not two outs now. Man on first. You got to pitch to him. All right, let's do it. And are you okay? The infield shifted a bit to the right on Ramirez. So they're playing That's him fine. a bit to the opposite field. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's right pitch inside out swing. To Aramis Ramirez. And that is taken for strike three. So Finally. Ramirez holds the bat. The Cubs score four, and it was all started with a Sammy Sosa blast. It's 4 nothing. During that frame, did, did you feel it a little, JP? Because when we did Dream Bracket, we were calling the action. Now you're in control of a team. Are you feeling a little heavy yeah, in the chest? I, I am. I'm emotionally invested right now, Scott. I'm an emotional person, <laughs> and I'm emotionally invested in this game right now. I, I am frustrated that my team, the one I fell in love with, is down 4 nothing. But we've got Tom Brookins at the plate. I've always loved Tom Brookins. Swing away. Come on, Tom. You start us off. Here we go. Brookins, a 241 hitter that year. And he's going to go up the middle. That's a base hit to there lead you off go. the third for the 87 Tigers. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is your guy. I feel right. like this Billy is my Bean. pick to click. Billy Bean is my right. pick to click because you're picking your buddy. We both know him well. He's in the nine spot. Yes. No one's giving him any love right now or attention. Well, we are, and we're counting on him. We're going to go hit and run here. Hit and run with your nine batter. Come on, Billy. Let's let's put the ball in play, and let's get first to third here. Let's do it. He does put the ball in play to the left side, so they can only make the play at first. And he advances the All runner right. to second. Nicely done. Stay out of the double play. Good job. Good job. Now we got chances to score him. I like it. Here we go. So we got Brookins at second base. Lou is batting. Swing away, Lou. Drive him in. Let's go. Let's get on the board. Leadoff man, Lou Whitaker, swings it towards the right side, down the line. There and it is, down through. the line. On the board. And the Tigers are on the board. It's good for a double for Lou Whitaker as the throw to second is not in time, and RBI knock, it's 4-1. to one. As they say at Tiger Stadium, Lou. <laughs> All right, Chet, here we go. Swing away, Chet, let's go. Nice inside-out swing. And great job there previously to go with the hit and run, getting the guy to second, didn't turn into the double play. Now that's a walk from nice. Pryor. Because this is one of those this nice. is one of those guys, nice. Jason Mark Pryor, where he can go nine innings, 12 strikeouts, but you're getting to him now. We're getting to him. I, I love the bottom part of the lineup really coming up big here. And now we got our, our major lefty stick here in Matt Noakes. Let's do it, Matt. Swinging away? Swinging away, 100%. Here's Noakes, and swinging and missing, uh, chased a pitch for right. strike three. I don't feel bad here because we got we have the MVP right here. Okay, Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer, should have been the MVP, World Series MVP three years previous. Tram is going to come through right here. Swing away. Tr Tram, you're the real MVP. Let's swing away. That's right. And he's getting past the right side. And here's your question, JP. Do you want to signal Lou Whitaker to round third and try to score? Ball is hit shallow. Whitaker's not fast. Sammy Sosa, though, has a below average arm. Do you want to squeak out one more run here? You don't know what will happen after this. What's the move? I am I am sending him. There's two outs. I'm sending him. Let's go. We are signaling Lou Whitaker to round third and come on down. The throw from Sosa home is short. Great call, JP. Yes! Number two. Two out RBI. Two out RBI. Here we that go. That is awesome. Go. All right. We got a lefty up here again, Daryl Evans. Swing away, Daryl. Let's go. Let's see that power on display. You know, longtime National League player with the Giants. He knows he knows Wrigley well. Let's go. And Mark Pryor not getting the shutdown inning. In fact, he misses. Ball four. Bags full of 87 nice. Tigers for the DH. All right. Here comes the Mad Dog. He's back at Wrigley. He won two batting titles there. Swing away, Bill Madlock. Here we go. Big spot in this game. Madlock on the ground, and the play will be made by Gonzalez. But you pulled off two runs. All right. You do strand three, but Great two on bats. the board. It's 4-2. Nice. We were putting the ball Still in play. Still sticking with Jack against Sammy Sosa? Put the ball in play. 
Ooh, okay, here we go. So, so we right now, uh, this is tough. This is tough. So, so do, do we still have Tanana warming up? Yeah, we. Uh, he might have sat down, but he should be warm. So you could okay. put him in, and I, I can check right, that so for I you. I would say let's keep Tanana sort of warming up still, kind of like a soft scenario where he's where he's somewhat ready. First sign of trouble, I want him to get hot. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's let's still pitch to Sosa, and, and let let's attack him because. We got to get him out, okay? We're up. We we've now gotten two runs back. We're in a pitch. Team. Here we go. Righty righty matchup, and this time Morris does get the best of Sosa. Nice, nice. Ball. One pitch, one out. Good. Good job. All right, here we go. I like this. Randall Simon. Okay, Jack, pitch to him. Throw the fork ball. Let's go. Keep it down. If you can hear JP, aka Sparky from the dugout, give him the fourth ball. Instead, it's his third walk issue Ugh. in this game. So, are you going batter to batter here? Are uh -oh. you getting worried? I, I am, and that's where I, I this is this is going to be his last hitter. So we're going to bring in Tanana to face Patterson. So let's let's go after Alou. Jack, it's your last hitter. I can't believe I'm pulling you in the third inning, but let's attack Alou, get him here, and then Tanana comes in. Do you want double play depth from your boys, Whitaker and Trammell? Yes, double play depth. Double play depth okay. from my gold play glove. Depth. Second base shortstop. This is your only chance, Jack, to keep going, is to get him here. If the inning gets to Patterson, you are out of the game. Let's go. One more question. You're holding the runner, or you don't need to with Simon? He's not fast. You just you want don't to need pitch to. No, no, your he, first he base is not a stolen base threat. Yep, so we're good. Okay, let's pitch to Moises. He's going to send it to shallow center, and there's Whitaker going out there to grab it for out number two. All right, pitching change. Here we go. We're going to we're gonna make Patterson face a lefty. Here comes Tanana. Let's head to the bullpen. Long guy. Frank Tanana is warmed and ready, and he is going to come in for Jack Morris after two and two-thirds. It is all hands on deck. Not a great day for Jack. Here comes Tanana, and you've still got... Doyle Alexander has a nice starting weapon out of the bullpen at some point, too. Yeah, I mean, right now, I'm thinking, Scott, this is the relay race. As soon as there's a sign of trouble, then Doyle comes in next. We've, we still have Mark Thurman there as a lefty. Tanan at the end, or uh, Henneman at the end of the game. I, I like my options. Perfect. Pitching to Corey Patterson here with two, two outs. Obviously, Absolutely. infield back to normal depth. Here we go. Lefty on the mound now and Frank Tanana. And a swing and a miss. Nice. Good job. Good job, Tanana. Good job, manager. How about that? All right, here we go. So Gibby is up there now. That's... Pryor Pryor showed some vulnerability last half inning here, Scott. I, I think that now second time through, I like our ABs. Swing away. Let's go, Gibby. Kirk Gibson against Mark Pryor. Some serious firepower in that bullpen Ooh. for Chicago. They stick with Pryor for now. And that's the high hard stuff for the strikeout. Same thing here with uh, with Brookins. I think we, we swing away. I thought about bunting here, but I, I think we swing away here. Four Ks, by the way. Three hits, three in the third right now for Pryor. He's at 75 pitches, so you're working some good ABs. He's not going to last too long. This is sent to right, and that's going to fall. That's a knock. And a one-out base runner nice. for your Tigers. Hit and run again with Billy Bean. Come on, Billy. I love it. I love the strategy. Billy Bean with Brookins on. Makes contact right side. Runners going. There's no double play chance. And you got a guy in scoring position. There you go. Hey, we have a, a two-out RBI chance with Lou Whitaker. He should be Hall of Famer at the plate. I like my chances. Come on, Lou. Swing away. Here we go. Let's swing away with Lou Whitaker in the top of that Tigers order. Lou is one for two so far this evening at Wrigley. 87 versus 03 squads sent to left and it will bounce and here we go again Tom nice Brookings gotta is send him. third gotta send are you gonna score shallow ball to the send left him. side nice. Brookings average Alou has a poor arm you're going right going going let's see if this is four three toss home no chance Sliding nice. head first, Lou Whitaker picks up the RBI single to bring home Brookings. It's 4-3.
Good send by Dick Trzuski over there at third base, baby. One of the best third base coaches in baseball history, Dick Trzuski. And now here we go. We've got Chet Lemon at the plate. Lose it first. Swing away. Swinging away. And taking ball four. Another walk. Nice. And the first free nice, pass nice. there for Chet Lemon. Here comes Noakes. Swing away. Let's go. Drive him in. I want a gapper, Matt Noakes. Here we go. <laughs> Or, or one over the wall would work, too. 30-plus home run guy that year. Uh, that's that's weak. That's the short. Tough play. Low They're going to be quick with it. And Alex Gonzalez is. He does. Gonzalez Ooh. played a, a good shortstop. Hey, there was that moment in 2003, right? There Against was that the Marlins, moment. Which there, doesn't there get talked about moment. enough. The error. We, we, we need not go back to it for Cup fans. <laughs> they know what we're talking about. It's now 4-3. to three. Here come the Tabbies. Tanana against Gonzalez. What's the move? Pitch to him. Here we go. Let's go. Bottom portion of the order for Chicago. And Gonzalez nice. is run up. Fastball. Tanana summoning his... So, of course, he had like multiple acts of his career. He came in fireballer with the Angels, and eventually he became a little bit more of a touch-and-feel lefty. Really, really great career that's underrated in the history of the game. Here we go. Pitch yes. to him as well here. Ranked. Frank Tanana against Damian Miller. Miller had that big two RBI hit against Jack Morris. This time, it's to short. It's Trammell. Long hold, though, and the throw is there for the out. Okay. Nice. There's a little bobble there from Trammell, but you hey. know he's getting the job done. Number three, always sure-handed. You see those, you see those gold gloves on his icon there for Trammell <laughs> Whitaker? Gold, my friend. There is gold there. All right, let's go pitch to Lofton. Pitching the loft and looking for a 1-2-3 inning. And finding it. Three up, three down. That was a statement frame from Frank Tanana. Good job by Tanana. Really, really good. Impressed. Of course, he was on the mound when they clinched the division against the Blue Jays this year. I should have known he was going to be a great option out of the pen here today. And now we lead off with the MVP, the should-be MVP. Number three, Alan Trammell. Swing away. Swinging away. Big Alan Trammell. Best bat on this team this year. And that's going to go roller to right. Okay. Simon steps on the bag for the first out. We're putting the ball in play. Putting the ball in play. I like it. Okay, Evans, same thing. Swing right. away. Darrell Evans. He's Swing away, sir. Great home run power. Oh, and that is a deep, deep drive to right. Does it stay fair? It is gone. Nice. It's Darryl gone. Evans connects. We are tied at four. I love it. I, I knew this team was going to come back, Scott. Just as they came back in the season, of course, a huge advantage for the Brewers. They had to win those games late against the Blue Jays. This has always been a great comeback team. I love the fight I'm seeing from the Tigers right now. And Bill Madlock at the plate, swing away. And Darrell Evans actually led the club that year, 34 home runs. For that 87 Tigers squad, two-time All-Star, he, he was on that 84 World Series winning squad as well. And now the Tigers create a fresh ball game. And there's your ground out. Grudzolana cleans it up. Madlock's done. And Pryor's still in the game, too. Dusty Baker likes to ride his starters. This probably should be the last batter if he gets the out for Pryor. He's at 103 pitches, although Dusty has shown us the ability back then to go maybe 130 pitches. But this has not been the best stuff today from Mark Pryor. So here's Gibby. I, I agree. And swing away with Gibby. Lefty bat, righty pitcher, center field, hanging up there for a while and caught. And Lofton makes the play to retire this side. From 4 0 to 4 4, Sparky and JP and the Tigers are back in this one. I love it. And we're going to stay with Tanana. I know it's a tough part of the lineup, but he's he's really in rhythm. He's going to have to get to the righties with Ramirez and Sosa, but I, I think he has the stuff to do it. So we're going to pitch to Grudzelanek here. Okay, sticking with Frank Tanana. Here's Grudzelanek. Swing and a miss. He chased out nice. of the zone. Grudzelanek himself eventually won a gold glove in 06 with the Kansas City Royals. So, again, Tanana here. Ramirez actually sixth most home runs all time in Cubs history. Pitch to him here, though. Come on, Frank. Let's go. Lefty-righty matchup. Aramis 
Watches the nice. fastball on the outside corner. Nice dot there from Tanana. Two strikeouts. And, and we, we're going to keep going. So, I, I, I'm not going to make Frank. You're pitching to Sammy. Sosa here. You got to go at him. Here we go. Okay, this is the guy. Sammy Sosa. It's in the air, but it's in the infield. And Lou Whitaker makes the catch. And Frank Tanana gets through three righties in the frame. It's 4-4, big shutdown inning from your guys. That was outstanding. And now two of the next three hitters for Frank are lefties. So I, I'm planning on staying with him through the sixth inning as long as he keeps this momentum going. I love the options we've got here. Uh, I know I've got a couple pinch hitting options on the bench, but I, I like my group. I, I'm, I'm going to stay with, with the core that we've got. Billy's done a great job with the hit and run, so swing, swing away here, Tom Brookins. Yeah, we've seen this situation before. If Brookins can get on, that's to short. This should be easy does it for Gonzalez. One up, one down. All right. Billy, here's your chance to shine, my friend. Swing away. Billy, Green, Billy Bean, who works for the MLB League office, friend of both of ours, sends it to deep left field. Oh, and it's caught probably about five, six feet on oh, the warning track. Oh, <laughs> my gosh, right to the wall. Good drive, Billy. I, I think he's going to he's gonna have a chance now. No need to hit and run with him necessarily. I, I think he's going to be swinging away the rest of the game. Okay, here we go. Lou Whitaker, swing away. I was getting worried, JP, that there was a guy in the left field seat that had headphones on that was going to try and snag the baseball <laughs> or something for Moises. But, but Moises he was worried as kid. well. Moises got <laughs> concerned too. You saw him there. Lou Whitaker and back to the top of the order for Detroit. Ball four. Your leadoff nice. man is on with two outs. Good, good. All right. And so we still have Pryor in here. Oh, here. Okay. I'm going to, we're going to hit, we're going to hit Johnny Grubb for Chet. I want the lefty righty okay, matchup. So if, if they're going to leave Pryor in the game, I'm taking my shot with Johnny Grubb. Yeah, and Pryor's at 119 pitches. So this is sort of the style we saw from the Cubs back then when they really rode their starting pitchers hard. And Pryor ended up only pitching, what, in, in the big leagues from about 2002 to 2006. And, and suffered a number right. of injuries. He's actually pitching coach on the Dodgers now, but he's still going. So we're heading to your bench, and Chet Lemon is going to be replaced. We're putting in Johnny Grubb. We're going to go Johnny Grubb here, and I think eventually after this half inning, Scott, we're going to have to move, I think, Billy to center, Grubb to left, and we'll keep Gibby, and we'll move Gibby to right. So we're going to reconfigure the lineup defensively so after this half inning we'll go billy in center we'll go grub in left and gibson in right i think i can do that now so grub is in left that's right and gibby Correct. will be in right we'll right field for gibby so that we there you we go are all that's set the plan. for the defense here's here's your pinch hitter let's see if you're pressing the right johnny button. grub you're swinging away with johnny grub swinging away all right, so goodbye, Chet Lemon, three-time All-Star on the bench. His day is done. Grub rips one right field, and it's caught. Oh, but that was nice. Oh. That was a rope, JP. Just right place, right time. Yeah, okay, good. Good Good. Good exit velo for Johnny Grubb. He's always the yes. great, bespectacled, pinch hitter extraordinaire. That was, my, that was my chance there. I wanted to take it with Johnny Grubb, and we're going to stay lefty here. But I, I want to get, for Alex Gonzalez, we're going to have uh, Alexander pitch to him so if this inning gets to Gonzalez I'm going to bring Doyle Alexander into the game so then we should warm him up right warm him up yep that's the plan here all right Doyle Alexander who go. was ridiculous that year is going to warm up and and JP I that's just right. I have a really good feeling about Doyle Alexander I think there is the potential that Doyle Alexander could as we get back to game action here that Doyle Alexander could go the distance in this one. What do you think? He he, he could be my bum garner here. This could be a bum yes. garner moment. Come in mid game. I have that just feeling, you, baby. Here we go. All right, let's okay, go. So Simon Frank, and Lou Patterson pitch away. pitching away to Nana and gets a pop up. Sure glove and nice play over his nice. shoulder. Trammell makes the catch. 
to the Gold Glover. All right, so we're going to keep keep on the attack here. We're going to pitch to Mo, pitch to Patterson. And let's hope that that's the end of the end. Okay. So here's Alou. The righty bat sends one deep center field, and that's going to punch off the ivy. Moises Alou will truck uh -oh. into second base with a stand-up double. Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, I, I think lefty you have to right. let him face the lefty. So so we're going to do – let's do this. To give Doyle more time, we're going to mound visit, and we're gonna, right. and then we're going to pitch to him. This is the mound. Yep. And here's the good. word All from right. your guy. I feel good. I really do. Good, good. Okay, good. So there you go. Okay. We visited the mound. Let's pitch to him, and let's see what happens. And we're okay playing straight up and, and everything, and, and we don't need to hold the yep, runner yep. here. Straight up. We're okay with the Lou. Yep. No, 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 okay. No. Straight up. We're going to get it. Patterson's one for two today. Now he's one for three. Curveball for strike nice. three. Nice. All right. Good job. All right, Frank, that was your last hitter. We're good. We're going to now bring in Doyle to face the righty righty to, to end this inning. Hopefully it's only one right. And Doyle is ready to go. So he's going to replace Frank Tanana, who went three strong innings with six strikeouts. Nice. Really good. That was a great effort. For the native Detroiter, Frank Tanana. Here comes the really great good. Doyle Alexander, who was the pickup for this 87 Tigers team. And hey, think about this too. August 15th, Alexander makes his debut with Detroit after the trade. They're one and a half games back of Toronto at the time, first in the AL East. They go 32 and 17 in the final 49, win the division by a couple games. So as much attention as this trade gets on the long term with the career that John Smoltz had, on the short term, Doyle Alexander had a 1.53 ERA, the 2.79 ERA plus is in 11 starts with Detroit. He was an absolute stud superstar pitcher for them. One of the best deadline pickups in baseball history. He was that great. And I would say certainly, first of all, I should note personally, he started the game that I saw with my dad that September. So that was, so Doyle Alexander mm -hmm. started the first game that I ever saw at Tiger Stadium, 1987, an incredible experience. He almost completed it. Sparky pulled him, I think, with one or two out in the ninth, and brought in Henneman, closed it out, 5-2 win over the Brewers. Alan Trammell, 3-4 for four that game. So I, I still remember a lot of things about that day. Um, but I, I would say this, that if they had given up Searcy the way that they could have, it would be remembered as one of the great deadline trades in baseball history, full stop, for the Tigers. Instead, because they gave up the wrong pitcher, <laughs> it's remembered the other way. And and you wonder, Scott, how did baseball history change on that one decision? I, I think we would both agree, if there is no John Smoltz in Atlanta, there is no Braves dynasty. I agree. And I, I go even deeper. Franchise, I, I look at, at Turner and, and, and TBS nationwide. I grew up watching a lot of Braves games, and, and they were so good for so many years. You just think about everything that could have been different if there wasn't a Hall of Famer in John Smoltz. So sure, there were other big, big names on those teams, but John Smoltz was the guy for a long time with the Atlanta Braves, a stud. He joined the big three, right, with Maddox and Glavin, and who knows what the Tigers would have looked like if they had a young John Smoltz, an ace for their rotation for years to come. Great point, Scott. They probably would not have gone as long as they did between playoff appearances. Remember, when they made the playoffs in 87, of course, as, we, as we've as we described, they came back on the Brewers and the Blue Jays to win the division that year. They lose in five games to the Twins in the ALCS. The Twins go on to win that incredible World Series in which the home team won every single game at the Homer Dome for the Twins and then the Cardinals, of course, winning the National League that year. They went 19 years without a playoff appearance between 87 and 06. Of course, let, let's put it this way. By the time they made it back to the playoffs, I had gone from a five-year-old fan in 87, I was on the beat covering the team for the Detroit Free Press by the time they were next in the playoffs in 06. That is how long the drought was. I had gone from a five-year-old to an actual grown-up with a job uh, covering the team. So it was a great, great memories there alongside my mentor, John Lowe, covering the, the 06 Tigers, Jim Leland and 
Maglio and Polanco and Guillen and Pudge and that whole group, Verlander, Zamaya. A lot of great memories there with that team. But yeah, that, that, that right there tells you the 19 year wait. I went from age five uh, to being a, a young 24 year old writer covering the team uh, for the free press. It gets me thinking maybe in the future we do something with Smolty pitching as a Tiger just to see what it looks like on this game. Yeah, be fun. that's a great simulation. If, if that trade does not happen, do the Tigers make the playoffs? There were some good, and I tell you what, Scott, maybe a, a different exercise to go into. That 93 team in the heyday of Cecil and Mickey Tettleton, Tony Phillips, Rob Deere, they had some serious power on those teams in the early 90s but not a lot of pitching. Bill Gullickson won 20 games one of those years, but that was a real tough time for them to pitch. And if John is leading the rotation there, it's a very different story. That's right. Okay, so now we're in the bottom of the six, two outs, and Doyle Alexander is in this game to face Alex Gonzalez. Tie game at four. It's the 87 Tigers and the Chicago Cubs from 2003, two teams that J.P. Morosi has very close ties to in different ways. And what's the move here? Sparky, you're managing the Tigers. You got to pitch to him. I, I brought Doyle in to pitch to him. Let's go. Doyle Alexander was a stud in 1987 for Detroit. Uh-oh, this pitch is smacked. Deep left field. Alex Gonzalez homers. He muscles up for two, and Chicago jumps out 6-4. Scott, we may have to pause here to, to fully uh, – capture the number of storylines that we have in this moment. We have Alexander giving it up. We have Alex Gonzalez, who, as we described at least a little bit earlier, committed the costly error that was truly the reason the Cubs lost game six of the 03 and LCS. And now he homers to put them ahead 6-4 after one might say an ill-advised pitching change by Sparky <laughs> slash me. And, uh, and so now, now we have to play from behind again. Tough. Shocking. I am shocked. The redemption let's, let's story for Alex here. Gonzalez. All right. Yes. Uh, Hopefully a little I, I'm therapy here. This, I'm press that is wild. There is your third out of the inning. But Doyle Alexander enters this game, faces Alex Gonzalez with a man on, gives up a two-run homer. Sosa homered earlier for the Cubs. They grab the lead back from Detroit. From 4-4 four, four to 6-4, six, after 6, we've reached the 7th. I can't believe I'm saying this, too, although I kind of can. Dusty has Mark Pryor still in the game, 120 pitches in. Now he's got a lead, so Dusty's like, all right, maybe he's going batter to batter. We'll start with Matt Noakes. If you could organize any game with any players in baseball history, who would you call? Can I interest you in a 1994 What If World Series Yankees Expos matchup? Or how would Team USA from the 2017 World Baseball Classic fare against Team Cuba? But here's the catch. This time, the Cuban roster features major leaguers. What about the two best clubs in the history of your favorite franchise? Like who's better, the 1985 Royals or the 2015 champs in KC? Stop wandering and start watching because this is the big idea. Big time guests dream of epic matchups on Out of the Park Baseball 22. Then we press play and manage it all, thanks to the ultimate baseball strategy game. Available on PC or the brand new Out of the Park Go on your mobile device. Take that curiosity, that all-time debate, that what if in baseball history, and make it happen. The big idea has arrived. Still there, so we have to swing away. And by the way, I think our, our colleague Dan Plesak somewhere is saying, the flags are blowing out at Wrigley. We always talk <laughs> about how the wind uh, changes the way that the game is played there. Two hopper for Alex Gonzalez, and he puts him away. You're right. I think the wind was in Chicago's favor for just that at bat. Alex Gonzalez ripped that one. It wasn't too far, it was 376 feet, but I mean, it, it was no. a bullet. It was more of a line drive homer. And, and here's your guy, Alan Trammell, in the cleanup spot. Swing away for Tram, here we go. So let's see if you can start some traffic here in the seventh, the road team. That's oh. strike three, Front nasty side. slider so, from Pryor. He's still got his stuff. And by the way, on Gonzalez, he actually had 
a 20 homer season as a Cubs shortstop, which is not very common for that franchise. So there is some pop in his bat. I don't feel that badly about Gonzalez being the guy that homered, but certainly the 6-4 deficit is now frustrating me a lot right now. Yes. No, I know. I can feel it in your voice right now. And here's Evan two homered earlier. We're swinging away. Swinging away. All right. Four walks, five strikeouts for Pryor. I'm sure you take a walk or a homer. Darrell Evans, deep to right. He has another. Yeah! Two homers there for Darrell Evans. We're back. We're back, baby. It's six to five. We have brought the tying run to the plate. Here we go. Oh, and now comes Farnsworth. So Farnsworth was eventually a Tigers reliever and uh, had some moments there where he was a little inconsistent. So maybe we're about to see the Tigers version of Farnsworth against the four-time, four-time NL batting champ, Bill Madlock. I like my chance with Madlock here. Swing away, Bill. All right. One run game now, Bill Madlock, the DH against the new man on the mound and Kyle Farnsworth. And that's on the right side for Simon. He gives it to the covering Kyle Farnsworth. The reliever just comes in the game, gets his one out and we move to the bottom of the seventh. Let's stretch in this classic ballpark at Wrigley. We're in 2003 and the Chicago Cubs have just a 6-5 lead. What a game and the top of the order coming up here for the Cubbies in the home seventh, then we're still going with Doyle Alexander, I'm assuming? We are, we are. And and one, one quick point that I'm a little bit concerned about from the last half inning, Farnsworth throws really hard. And, and I think that you go back to 87, they were not seeing this level of velocity very often back then. Mm -hmm. So I think that right now I'm a little bit worried. I think Dusty made the right call to bring in Farnsworth. I think my lineup might struggle to keep up with the VLO. Farnsworth may have to play a little small ball. We'll see. But for now, Alexander, yes, let's go pitch. Let's, let's pitch to Kenny, and let's hope that we get uh, an efficient seventh inning. Oh, that's weak to second. Mm. Got to be a quick play. No chance. Kenny Lofton is so fast. He's got an infield knock, his first hit of the day. All right, we have to have Daryl hold Kenny on first base now. Double play depth for Lou and Tram. And let's get a ground ball. Get a ground ball. Let's go pitch to contact. I want the ball on the ground from Grudzelanek. Here we go. And it's a bunt oh. left side. It's fielded nicely. And the throw is made over to first. So Lofton moves up to second. Grudzelanek makes a nice bunt effort to move a man into scoring position. Okay. And now they've got a Ramos. Mm. So I have to pick my poison here. Do I want to pitch yeah. to Aramis or Sosa? Uh, I think that we're going to have to pitch to Aramis. That's that's the tough call here. Okay. I got to pitch to him. They're still shifting him to the right a little bit. He's got power to all fields. Yep. So like are that. you going to – and and we're going to pitch away. Are we worried about Kenny or not really? I, I, I we'll, we'll hold Kenny on at second because there's only – because there's okay. one out. So I think the steal is, is in play for him. So we'll hold Kenny, but we're gonna we gotta pitch to Aramis. I I don't want to walk him ahead of Sosa. Yeah, he's 0 for three today, and that is a diving catch in left field by Grubb, who is just put into this game in left. So you put the pinch hitter in, he ends up playing in left, and he makes a nice play. Yeah, I, I certainly am a little bit nervous about my outfield defense because Chet's probably my best defensive outfielder, but I wanted to take my chance to grub as the pinch hitter. So that was pretty good. So, okay, here we go. I think now I can't let Sosa beat me. So I got to walk him intentionally. So we'll walk Sosa intentionally, and then we're going to go after Simon. Johnny Grubb, by the way, with a catch that saves a run. He's 39 years old out there. I didn't realize how old he was playing in left field. This was the end of the road. Yeah, he had been a he'd been a World Series champion with the Kansas City Royals just two years previous. Now it's Simon with Sosa and Lofton on. So are we going double play, or we don't need that? It's two outs. So are we? Yeah, going we're just, straight we're, up. We're going to go pitch to him normal. Uh, right now we don't have much of a choice. <laughs> we don't need to hold exactly. Do we? We don't need to hold Kenny here. Not as worried. I, don't I mean, think it's going to score him anyway. I want to put my best defense out there. So we're just going to infield normal, outfield normal, two outs. Let's just get the out. Pitching to Randall Simon. 
Alexander to Simon. That is scorched, and that will drop. And you know Lofton's coming around, and he will score. Ooh. That's a big insurance run, RBI single for Randall Simon. Maybe I should have played the outfield in there, but that would have been tough to make a play on. I I'm a little yeah. frustrated. Let let's uh, let's go. Let's let we're not going to hold Sosa on second. Just pitch to him, but I'm just a little frustrated here. Okay, no, I, I can feel it. And Alexander has given up some <laughs> runs here. This, this is not the Doyle Alexander we're used to seeing. That sent to center. Here comes the run. Play at the plate. Sosa is safe, and Moises Alou connects for an RBI single. It is eight to five. Uh, one of the great run producers, Moises Alou, and now I am I am bummed. Um, I, I have to, he's gonna Doyle has to get Patterson here. We've got two outs. You, you've got to pitch to him, but I think we probably have to start warming Mark Thurmond up in the pen. And if and Should if the inning now? gets to Lofton, then 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 Thurman gets in the game as a lefty. Okay. There you go. The lefty Mark Thurmond is going to warm up. And also, by the way, the Cubs have eight runs. You have a, a pretty decent starting staff here that's been pitching so far this evening. Cubs offense was not great in the regular season. Back then, batting average was a big deal. They were 22nd with a 259 average. And run scored, they were 20th in baseball. But, you know, they, they had, I, right. I would say, some streakiness to them. And I think this offense, if anything, might have been a little bit underrated. I think you're right. And, and they had some big games. I remember Doug Glanville had a big game during the postseason uh, in the NLCS. Right. Eric Karros, of course, clutch RBIs. Kesop Choi had a really good start in the season. And Patterson actually missed a lot of that year with an injury. But uh, the fact that he's back and part of this lineup has been a huge thing for the Cubs here tonight. Okay. So and we have to pitch two here with two did outs. The job. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and Alexander has not. He's got to get Corey Patterson to keep this game close. It's 8-5. All right, JP. Pitch into the batter. Patterson's one for three, and he strikes out on an 0-2. Okay, so Doyle Alexander nice. goes upstairs with the heat and escapes. But two more runs for the Cubs on three hits. It's 8-5, and you've got work to do. Six, with six outs away. Despair. So remember, remember, Scott, they were six outs away when, when everything – it was five outs away, actually. Everything started unraveling for the Cubs in game six against the Marlins in the eighth inning at home in a game prior started. So – I'm going to be optimistic that history may repeat itself. And I love Gibby here in a big spot against Farnsworth. Swing away, Gibby. Let's go. Here we go. Swinging away. Deep drive. Right field. It is gone. It clears the benches out there in right field. The bleachers did not see that baseball. It goes past them onto the concourse. Oh, Kirk Gibson showing his clutchness. 412 feet with the homer. It's 8-6. I love it. I love it. Hey, here we go. We got 84 World Series, 88 World Series, out of the park baseball, baby. It's all it's all the same Gibby, and I can't wait. I'm so excited about this. And now I'm going to my bench. Let, uh, let's flip my bench okay. options here, Scotty, because I, I want to go. I love Tom Brookins, but I want a lefty up, and so I think I'm going to go – with the switch hitter Jim Whalewander, who was a great late season story for those Tigers. So, pinch hitter Jim Whalewander for Brookins batting eighth. Let's go. Here we go. Whalewander coming in. The switch hitter. Eight six. Kirk Gibson just homer. Daryl Evans has two smashes in this game as well. JP playing as the 1987 Tigers against the 03 Cubs. The computer running that team, a.k.a. Dusty Baker, who rode Mark Pryor for quite a while. Now he's got Farnsworth in. We're swinging away with Whale Wander. Yes, I'm debating if I would go with speed there. So his speed rating there is, is 75? Yes, his speed rating is 75. Okay, I, I, th I think we're going to bunt for a hit here. Bunt for a hit. Wow. Okay, let's try and set the table here. Well, Wander puts a bunt down, but it goes right back to ah, on a 1-0 pitch. Wanted right back. Okay, all right. So let's uh, swing away with Billy. Here we go. I, I, okay. I'm second guessing myself try, on though. the bunt already, but yeah. You've pressed many correct buttons, including this one. Billy Bean instead sets the table. 
for the Tigers. Billy, my friend, you are rewarding my confidence. Great at-bats all game for Billy. I love this. Turning the lineup over now. We've got Lou leading off. We've got one out. Let's do hit and run here. Here we go, guys. Come on. Hit and run. That was a young Billy Bean, too. 23 years old. Hit and run. How about deep center field? It is the eights here it's eight eight in the eighth Wrigley is stunned silent the Tigers are coming back we got this rematch of the 45 World Series and oh no Big Z is on the mound I'm gonna keep Johnny Grubb right there lefty bat there make Big Z face the lefty I love it here we go this game is wild eight eight we're in the eighth JP's team comes back again Zambrano's on the mound, who really broke out in 2003. And he is going to get a pop-up into shallow left for the second out. I'm like out of breath, JP. Wow. What what a game. All right, come on, Matt Noakes. So Matt Noakes, 32 homers that year, tied for second most by a Tigers catcher ever. Swinging away. Hitless so far in four ABs, and this time he comes through. Base hit, base hit. Okay, do I try? So I'm debating here if I try to steal. I, 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 I'm not gonna steal because I don't wanna take the bat out of Trammell's hand. So, so Tram, just to swing away for Trammell. Swinging away, your best bat, Alan Trammell, goes up the chute, and he's got a knock. And going from first to third is Noakes. First to Runners third, here we are. For okay. Detroit. Here we are. All right. I'm uh, proud of your offense, too, especially this guy. Yeah, let's swing away. I, I, I'd love to try a double steal, something creative, but not when I have a home run threat at the plate. So swing away from Darrell Evans. He's smoking hot in this game. Two homers. That's ball four. Zambrano on a full count pitch did not get him to bite. And the bags are full of 1987 Detroit Tigers. JP playing Sparky Anderson, the Hall of Famer who managed this team and actually won AL Manager of the Year in 1987. And you have Bill Great Matlock year. up with the bases loaded. Huge spot here. I'm going with the batting champ here. Swing away. Swinging away. Key at bat of the game. And oh, it's a line out to first. Oh! Three runs, five hits. But it could have been more. Wow. Wow, wow. Okay. All right, so. Let's set up the defense. Yeah, we, we, we put Whale Wander in at third base. Okay. Yep, so he goes straight. No, yep, so. Uh, no, we'll put uh, Whale, yeah, Whale Wander. St so Lou goes to, Lou stays at second, Whale Wander to third. There you go. There All right, you go. got it. Okay. Perfect. And I we're like good it. to go. Yeah, and I think on the mound, uh, so let's go with Thurman, right? Because, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Let, let's go with Mark. He's Thurman. ready. I like it. Let's do that. He's ready. Yeah, let's get to that bullpen. This was, was not a great day for that. Doyle Alexander. Yeah. Not not yeah, the and best. Then think, and then we've so we'll, we'll put Doyle Thurman Alexander in. Today. And then let's warm up Henneman behind him. I want Henneman ready for the for the, the, the writing that follows Lofton. So that's so if this if this inning gets to Lofton, past Lofton, I want Henneman to pitch to Grudzelonic, Ramirez, Sosa. That's the plan. And okay. Henneman is warm and Henneman was great. I'm a little surprised we year. haven't seen Carroll as as a pinch hitter here yet. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Well Alex Gonzalez had a big home run. That's true. To give the Cubs the lead back, but it's 8-8 eight, eight now. All right, Mark and Thurman, here we go. We have Thurman on the mound. We're going to pitch to him. Here Pitching we go. Away. Let's do yeah. this. The lefty to the righty, Gonzalez, opposite field, caught in right nice. by Kirk Gibson. Nice. Okay. I'm still a little bit nervous facing a righty here, but the idea for Thurman is he's, he's going to face Miller and then Lofton, and he's out of the game. So this is he's got to get two okay. more guys, one of them is a lefty. So let's go. And this is the nine hitter, Damian Miller. Did have a two RBI hit earlier. This time, swinging a miss on nice. the curveball. 
Nice, nice. Huge effort for Thurman. Let's go now. Let's get Lofton. This is why he's in the game. And look, it's a dribbler. Scoops it up. The throw to first is not in oh. time. Lofton safe. Oh, man. All right. Got to make the change. Let's, so I, I want go. Henneman to face Kujalana. You want to visit the mound? Well, let's yeah, see let's if he's warm, right? Do you need to visit the mound? Yeah, visit okay. the mound, make the change, and then we'll go he's ready. with... Yeah, he's ready. Let's do it. <laughs> and, and well, look, I have yet to break look at Thurman. Start, but Henneman's ready. Sorry. Sorry, Mark. You should have gotten Lofton. So uh, I want Henneman in the game <laughs> here. Uh, and, and we got to hold Lofton at first base. Here he comes, Mark Hen or Mike Henneman for Mark Thurmond. There's your new pitcher. I've yet to break a sweat. Well, sorry, you let Lofton on. Sorry, should have gotten uh, Lofton. Yes, Henneman is in the game. Mike Henneman, a 2.98 ERA back in '87, uh, ERA plus with 100 at league average, 143. He has 154 career saves uh, with the Tigers, second most in franchise history, and he's facing. A slew of righties, starting with Greg Zalonik. Are we pitching to the batter with one on with Lofton? Pitching to him, yes. Uh, we're holding Lofton on first and pitching to Greg Zalonik. Let's do it. And Mike is a ground ball pitcher, yes. And he has a strikeout. A swing and a miss. Nice. Nice call. Another new pitcher Nine in the game, too, for you, JP, for the Cubs. Joe is in the game. Uh, I like my I like my chances there. I've got a lot of lefties due up. We're, we're going to swing away with Gibby. Here we go. All right, let's see if you're going to outmanage Dusty. Gibby up the middle, base hit. That's a great way to start nice. off the nine. All right, uh, so now I'm tempted here. Let's do let's do hit and run with Whale Wander. Okay. Jim Whale Wander, the switch hitter, recently inserted into this game by the great J.P. Morosi. Hit and run is on. <laughs> Swing and a miss. The throw to second base is not in time. Safe. It's safe. safe. A stolen bag for Kirk Gibson. Nice, nice. Okay, here we go. So uh, so now that we've got the stolen base, Gibby's at second. Now we bunt. Let's. We're, we're going to sack bunt to get Gibby over to third. Okay, and Kirk Gibson was fast. He led the team that year in stolen bases with 26 of them. So... Let's do a bunt for Jim Wellwander to try and move the runner over. That's right side, high chopper. And Simon has it, spears it, and makes the play for the out. Gibby, Gibby didn't advance? not able to move over. No. Oh, he no. He had to stay put too quickly with the bunt to the right side for Simon. Oh, man. All right, well, let's, let's swing away, Billy. Here we go. It's Billy your Bean chance, going chance. to be the He's big man. Bad bats all, all game. I, I got to let him swing. A hit in his last A-B, and this time it's going to fall. Yes. Okay. Kirk oh, Gibson could round third and score. Yep. It's shallow. He's fast. Lofton has a great arm, go. though. Go, he Gibby, hesitate. Go. Go, Gibby, go. Lofton, throw. No. He's in there. Billy Bean with an RBI single. A go-ahead hit for the Billy Tigers. Bean is the hero. This is so great. The I love lead. this. I love this. Best the Tigers lead 9-8. Wow. Was starting Billy. This is incredible. JP, you're managing this. a great game. I got to tell you. I am, I am <laughs> as excited as oh, I've so been, great. I think, in the past few years. This is awesome. Uh, I, this has been so much fun. I, I love this. And, and I, I, I love that my trust in Billy has been rewarded here. This is great. Borowski gives up the run. Lou Whitaker is in the game, uh, leading off with one out and a man on first and a chance for a little I'm going hit and run. to try hit and drive in some more damage. Hit and run. Hit okay. And run. Hit and run. I love the strategy all game long from J.P. Morosi. A little bit of small ball, a little bit of contact. Hit and run this time. Catch is made. Lofton races over to haul it in, and Billy Bean scurries back to first. Two down, okay. one with on. Johnny, Johnny Grubb. Grubb. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal with Billy here. Now, do you want to steal smartly, um, depending on the situation and the pitch steal and the smart. jump? Steal smart. We'll do steal okay. smart with with a take. Yeah. 
Yep, he'll head back to first. Not a great jump for Not Billy, and jump. that's inside. That's right, ball let's, one. Let's just swing away then. Let's let's swing away. Here we go. So no no steal attempt. No steal. Okay, we're swinging away with Johnny Grubb. Beans at first. Grubb's going left field, and it is caught. Moises a loose okay. sprints over to make the catch. All right. Nine hey, eight. I, I've got exactly what I want here, Scott. I've got a one run lead. Henneman's on the mound. And, and and listen, I know I've got Willie Hernandez back there. Willie was MVP in '84. I get all that, but this is Henneman's game. Win or lose, Henneman's game. You're, There's no the, the bullpen's going to be up, quiet. Willie? He's my closer. I, I'm not even going to warm him up. This is Henneman's game. Wow. Okay. Henneman's game. Three, Here four, five. Meat of the order. We pitch in two. Aramis Ramirez. Yes. Okay. Wrigley Field, a bit quiet, a bit nervous, and even more so now as Alan Trammell in that short glove makes the play for and out a nice, one. A nice pickup by Evans, a nice scoop there. The throw was in the dirt, a nice scoop by Evans. One out, here we go. Now we got we got to pitch to Sosa. I'm not going to walk the, the tying run on base. He has to earn it. Really? We're going to pitch to Sosa. Okay. You sure? Let's pitch to Sammy Sosa. Hanneman winds, deals. Sosa pops it up. Looks like it could be in foul ground, and oh, the catch isn't made. No, Kirk Gibson. This is like a make the catch. Like a Bartman in right field moment. It's like That's an what I was thinking. Bartman. It's the reverse Bartman. Could it make by the, the way, play? Scott, I, I love your dramatic pause before that pitch, as if you were second guessing my decision to to, to really pitch to Sosa, <laughs> like. And JP is deciding he's going to pitch to Sosa. Okay, I, I, listen, this is like Shades of Luis Castillo in Pryor all over again. But you got to pitch to him. One, one I trust Mike Evans. Let's pitch go. Him. Come on, Mike. Okay, we're pitching to him. Somebody must have distracted Gibson and right, and this time Sosa's going to left. It is caught. That one hangs up for a while, and the wind was not as Johnny fortuitous Grubb. for the Cubs on that one. Love it. Johnny Grubb is there. Nice okay, here we up. go. We're going to face the former Tiger, Randall Simon. And we're going to pitch to him. Here we go. Pitching to the batter. This is it. Two outs. We're in the ninth. Two outs it's nine ninth. eight. This game has been insane, and we kind of had a Bartman ish play just before, but it didn't burn JP. We're pitching to Randall Simon. Henneman trying to shut the door. And that's weak. Left side. Trammell collects. It was deep in the hole. The throw yeah! is there. Snap throw from Trammell. What a great try across the diamond. I thought maybe he was going to hold it. Instead he goes. And the, what is it called? Oh. The JP Cup? Well, yeah, the, the Morosi Cup. The Tigers, the 87 the Tigers Cup win. The Morosi Cup is over. The Morosi Cup. <laughs> How about that? The Morosi Cup is over, and that I think that's our, our heartbeat right now or something that we're looking at on the screen wow. because, whoo, that was a wild what ride, a game. JP. Your 1987 what Tigers a game. win. So you see what it there. a game. My win expectancy was way down after the Cubs took that 8-5 lead. I mean, it was way down there. Look at that. I mean, that's like, that's like 90% plus Cubs win in the eighth inning. Once they take that 8-5 lead. And here come the Tigers storming back. Uh, but you know what, Scott? Here's the deal. I know in the press conference, as, as you're running the press conference, your your first question mm -hmm. is about, John, how did you know Billy Bean was going to have a great game? Yeah, a really creative substitution there with Whale Wander and Grubb and, and trusting Henneman late. And, and there's going to be Mark Thurman in the eighth inning. What a great job. So you're asking me all these questions about the moves I made. But, Scott, it's not about me. It's about the players. It's about the players. <laughs> the credit belongs to my players. Billy Bean had the game of his life tonight. Trammell, solid, of course, as he always is. Great play in the ninth inning to close the game out. Whitaker, good good game calling behind the plate with Noakes. We stayed in it. I'm proud of the Tigers, Scott. I'm, I'm proud of my Tigers here. It was, it was a good, good this team This game win. had it all. MVP of this game is Lou Whitaker, named by the writers. And he said afterwards, we've got grit. We know how to win when we have to. 
And Lou Whitaker and the Detroit Tigers. I mean, look at Lou. Three hits and five ABs, two runs scored. He drove in four. He also walked a couple other notables here. Evans had two home runs. Kirk Gibson had the big homer. And yes, I have to say, JP, I really genuinely am beyond impressed with the way that you managed this game from start to finish from putting Billy Bean in the lineup. Not many managers necessarily do that. This is a young Billy Bean, 23 years old, not necessarily a starter in most cases. You had Gibby come up big, Evans come up big, your guys, Whitaker at the top of the lineup, you put him in there. And then the pitching changes, even though you didn't feel great about Jack Morris once we saw what happened to him with the four runs and two and two thirds, Tanana was huge in that middle area for you guys to kind of pick things up and tie up this game eventually. Alexander didn't have it, but then you go and press the right buttons in the bullpen. And again, I got to say, JP, it's like, you know, it's like you watched a few 87 Tigers games. Like, you know, this. Team. <laughs> I did, and it was tempting to put in Willie Hernandez, but I thought Thurman was the better fit there, and then to go with Henneman for a four-out save. But these are these are two teams, I, as I mentioned, Scott, that mean a lot to me. 87, 03, formative years in my life, and so to have these two great franchises near my home, and of course, as you know, when we work together at the network a lot, I'm driving around the Midwest. There's nothing I love more than driving up to these great Midwestern ballparks and and talking ball here uh, close to where I live around the Great Lakes. So for me, it's a very special matchup. And uh, it's an honor to be able to work this game with you, Scott. This is a lot of fun. And, and again, the credit belongs to my players, to my Tigers of 1987. And a great, a great lineup. And, and that Cubs team was fun to watch. And a, another heartbreaking loss for the 2003 Sorry, Cubs. Cubs. Sorry, Cubs Sosa fans. was great, though. It, it, Sosa it's was It's all great. good. Yeah, Sosa was great. You're right. Sosa was one for four. He had that big homer, made some nice plays in the outfield. Alou was two for three. I thought that when Gibson didn't make the catch and foul ground, Sosa was going to make everyone pay, and there was going to be some conversation, and that was going to steal the headlines. Who, what distracted Kirk Gibson? Uh, that's a great question. There may have been uh, a, a cousin of the Bartmans who was in right field at the time, but here's the deal <laughs> on that. This affirms... The fact that we did not see this unfold in that fashion, where the, the Tigers would have blown the game there it, right when that happened, affirms to me that sadly, for Alex Gonzalez, the true reason the Cubs lost that game six was the error. That was what cost the game. It was not, and actually, I'll tell you this, Scott, this was affirmed when I wrote the story about Mark Grudzelanek when he was inducted into the National Polish American Sports Hall of Fame in the state of Michigan. When I interviewed Mark Grudzelanek about that honor and wrote the story about it, Mark basically said that while the the Alou play was strange, it was not until after the double play ball was booted that he really had that sinking feeling that they were going to lose that game. So that's how Grudzelanek felt. That's how I felt. And the way that this game cosmically played out affirms that it was the error and not the Bartman play that actually turned that game back in 2003. So this was also a, a mystery, an investigation. And by playing out this yeah, simulation, it, it helped to tell the story of the 03 Cubs. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it should be cathartic wow. for Bartman. Yes, exactly. Right. To see what happened here and to see the Cubs... Other Cubs, including Cubs on the field, give it up in a big spot like Borowski did for Chicago. Coming in the game, he was really good that year, but not in this one, as you can see. Gives up the run, Billy Bean with the knock, and that's how it's done. And also credit to Dusty Baker for being Dusty back then and going 130 tosses with Mark Pryor. We, here, I'll give you one more, one more thing that stood out to me. Kerry Wood was fantastic that year. Kerry Wood has shown the ability to come out of the bullpen, too, in his career. And we did not see Kerry Wood in this game. That's the one guy that I was available. expecting. He was we available. Not, see. not used. And remember, game seven of the NLCS in 03, Wood started and homered. He had a home run in that game. The Cubs had a chance to win the game seven of that series. They had a lead. And like many Cub games of that vintage, did not <laughs> unfold uh, in their favor at the end. But they had a chance in game seven. And, and Wood at least offensively, was very much on his game that day. Yes, and he did not show up today. Cubs give it up a couple times in their bullpen, and JP pulls off the W. So this 
is the big idea. Epic guests playing out. Epic matchups on Out of the Park Baseball 22. Play what the pros play. The ultimate baseball strategy game. JP Morosi, my friend. It was so good to relive the magic. Dream Bracket 2.0. We controlled this thing. I felt it a lot more. Hey, it's one thing to call it. It's another thing to be a part of it, especially on your side and be managing this. I loved this, JP. Such an awesome time. Scott, I love it, my friend. I had a great time with you, as always. I love working with you, whether we're at the ballpark or, or, or here uh, connecting uh, over remote distantly. It's just it's a lot of fun. And this, this affirms, Scott, that the smile I have right now and, and how much we love the game, I have the same appreciation when we're, when we're telling jokes and having fun during the course of a broadcast of a major league game like we often do, telling stories and, and laughing our way through the game, uh, and then doing this. It's all the joy that we have for what we do and the game that we share. So, Scott, thank you for letting me be part of this today and to, to celebrate two great teams that are, are a big part of my life. Yeah, we don't take it for granted, you and me. We know that. JP, you're the man, my friend, and we work together all the time. Again, thank you so much for doing this. And, uh, of course, we'll have to do it again sometime. All right? Scotty, as you've always said, keep dreaming. That's right. <laughs> if you were a Dream Bracket <laughs> fan, Keep dreaming, and we'll see you for the next one. Out of the Park Baseball 22. Play what the pros play. The world's best baseball strategy game. Whether you're new school or old school, all that matters is winning. Take full control of any current Major League Baseball franchise. Discover and develop elite players, coaches, and scouts. Run your team your way and build a World Series champion. The Infinite Baseball Sandbox. All new for 2021. Stunning new 3D ballparks for every major league team. Or build your own unique majestic landmark with our dramatically improved ballpark construction kit. A completely remodeled coaching system that connects and impacts your entire organization. All new strategies and management options give you unprecedented control. Plus, dozens of gameplay and performance improvements that make the best even better. And of course, Perfect Team 22. The critically acclaimed online competition roars back this season with more strategies, more content, and a brand new mode, Perfect Draft. Out of the Park Baseball 22, available worldwide on March 26th, 2021.